Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of X4, the 4.0 Beginner's Guide. Today we are going to be talking about all of the menus that are on X4, or at least the main menus that you have get through all of this, and what each one's kind of telling you, and how you can use that to your best advantage. Right, so, thank you very much for those who have commented asking for this video. I know some of you are a bit overwhelmed with all of this information, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip it back down for a minute. So we've only got the one menu, and we're going to go through with it. The menus, once you get used to it, you will find that they're actually quite simplified and very easy to understand in terms of your gameplay. So once you've got everything set up and you know what you're looking at, then you're going to need only one or two of them. And the rest of it, you're just going to pop in every now and then. So the first thing you've got, as I've mentioned previously, is the object list. That picks up everything that's in your view range. So if you try and go here, you'll see it's bringing up as much as possible. What it doesn't do, because we're zoomed out, this is um, a macro zoom you got a micro zoom because the factories here are just blue squares or hexagons should i say then it doesn't pick it up in your object list if you zoom in until it goes to a mac micro you see they start picking them up here that's what that's going to show you i don't tend to use that unless i'm looking for something specific like an enemy attacking the sector or something like that the second one down is property owned as i've discussed previously that is all of your property owned no matter where you're looking doesn't change it'll show you your stations it'll show you fleets everything later down the line that can get quite consumed with space and you can narrow it down a little bit and i'll talk about that when we start looking at building um stations and fleets and stuff like that because all these unassigned ships here they take up a lot of space especially when you get 100 fighters that's 100 fighters on one list the next one is your mission offers any mission offers you get will come into this here so you can see here we've got the Hattic Vars uh, Trade Revolution uh, that it offers you. We've also got supplies needed by the Argon. And it gives you a timer and obviously difficulty and what reward you get. These missions do not overlook them if you want to earn cash by doing something so you're more hands-on. But you don't want to go crystal farming. They're brilliant for cash. But be wary that at this stage they are a high risk. Even the easy ones are high risk because if you get blown up, that's it. Game over. You've only got two miners, so yeah, you could eject out, go to your miner, and carry on from there, but you're going to have no support vessel whatsoever, so just be wary of that. Your next one is your mission manager. This one's a little bit different. So this one is one where you've got missions that are accepted, upkeep missions, and guidance missions. The first one, missions that you've accepted, is pretty obvious, and that you accept it. So you saw the one from our, one of our first episodes there that we picked up, and obviously our main story, which is class is important get guild missions for when you join guilds but we're not at that stage at the moment and then you've got your upkeep missions which are anything to do with needing a manager a captain um needing a builder needing more resources all that kind of thing it generally evolves around your stuff and the last one is a guidance mission guidance mission is the mission you set a guidance to position and there's your guidance mission you can then stop the guidance there and it removes it from your menu like so next one is information the information is exactly what it says on the tin it picks up any information on whatever item you've selected at that one time it also includes the sector it'll tell you information along the lines of population your workforce availability bonus your station workforce known stations your main production do not overlook this information. I've overlooked this in my previous builds. Do not overlook it because this little factor here will allow you to see what they're going to accept. So if you get something like refined goods in this sector here, you're competing against the Argon. What you do know now is they're going to need energy cells, which all of them do anyway, and ore because their main production is refined goods so they're going to need a supply for that we've also got sunlight as well which obviously if you're building energy cells which is what we're going to go on to at a later stage then you know that you've got 100 percent sunlight so that means your energy stations are going to work productively you've got all 138k ore in the sector perfect for us and we've got silicon 94,992. from our previous episode i believe that one of them um one of them little numbers is going to be the amount of all that's left. But I could be wrong. I'm still waiting out on an answer for that. The last one is manage plots. We're not at the stage for managing plots right now. But basically, whatever sector you select, and it generally means you've got to click on it, 
Uh, we're actually sat on the Argon Prime sector at the moment, so... Second contact, do we zoom in? Hmm. I think it's actually basing it off what sector we're in now. Okay, that is an adjustment for 4.0. Didn't realize that. So this is, as it says, is where you create your sectors. So you choose what size you want for your station and then place down your plot. I'm not going to go into that now because obviously we're going to do a whole video on station building. But that's what it's for. I've spoken about the filter settings. This here allows you to filter. So you can do trade filters. You can do mining filters. And you can do other filters. Show faction colors. Highlight visitors. There's loads of stuff you can do now. They're really good. You can even search for specific ships as well. We turn this on here. You now get the option. Go resources. You can drop the resources off if you so wish. So you can tidy up your screen if you want. That's really good. If you turn that off though, you can actually see at a glance what you need for your sector. I leave them off. Your trade filter, we've obviously discussed what that was previously. Bought wares and sold wares. Brilliant for trading. We will go into that more for trading. But you know it's there. And obviously, your last one was the other filter. We don't need to show that too much, but that will show you uh, show faction colors. You can actually get faction colors rather than a hit just being blue and red. And you can highlight visitors as well. Background or pink. Even do that. But if you don't want to see what you're in with your background, you can get rid of it. And you've obviously got your gate connections. You can really strip it down to having absolutely nothing on the map. Which is great. You know, you've got that option. So if you want more information or less information, you just go ahead and do that. You've got that there as well. To turn it on and off. And you've got reset to top view. If you need to reset to top view. Legend, I've discussed in the last episode, absolutely everything. It even tells you your behaviours. Take a minute to have a look at that. Because it is so useful. Because you can just at a glance know what they're doing. So when you get someone flashing like that, you know that somebody's attacking. They're brilliant. Keep an eye on your legends if you're ever struggling. And the last one is a secondary information bar. As I've mentioned in the past, that will give you information on whatever you've clicked. If I go here, you see that this hasn't been replaced with the information bar. You can replace it with the information bar if you right click and click information. It will bring it up. However, it allows you to filter through things. So, for example, I've got my miner here. I go to my information. And I'll go, oh, he's got some ore. So, let's hypothetically say he's full of ore. And he's on auto trade. But I don't want him to auto trade that. I need some ore desperately in my station. I've selected him there. I know what ore he's got. I can then look at this menu here. He's still selected. I know he's still selected because he's here with the information and everything that I need. I can then right click and tell him to deposit that ore to one of my stations or whatever you need him to do. So let's discuss a little bit about the inner workings of these. So for example, the object list that we discussed. The object list allows you to do stations and all ships or just stations and subordinates or just ships. And you can do your deployables as well. It tells you your information here. Exactly the same on this side. Property owned. It's a little bit more broken down. Stations and ships. Stations and subordinates. Fleets. Really useful. Your unassigned ships. So if you need to see what ships aren't assigned at the moment. And you need to assign some of them. Ships with inventory. Which will come later down the line. But basically ships can hold their own inventory. Which you then can do deposit to the HQ. And then use that for a different kind of trading. Not the trading that you use. For ships and stuff like that, you have your personal inventory which you can trade stuff with and build up grades. We'll come on to that later down the line. And the last one is your deployables in every sector. All your deployables. You can sort them out as well as you so wish. We've already done everything else, so we don't need to worry about them too much. Information is a little bit different. So information, you've got your general information. It'll tell you the name of your ship. You can change the name if you so wish. Who owns it? Obviously, I own it because I'm Val Sultan at the moment. Where it is, what model it is. So for example, if you change this name for Miner Mark 1, you still know it's a courier mineral. So even at a glance, I know that is a small ship because it's a courier and it holds minerals, not gases. Produced by 
this is basically what the modules are so for example if you've got a attic var shield platform or something like that or it's got attic var parts placed into it for example um resource probes they could be from the attic var so they will put that down as down as produced by your ship type which tells you exactly what it is minor and your various hull information your speeds your output for your weapons which is useful if you want to do a firefight Crew skill, which is your combined crew, so that's your pilot and your service crew, which is very important. Do not forget that when you're trying to get them up for leveling. If you want to really set your level higher, then make sure that your crew is also at the same level as your pilot, and it doesn't bring down the overall level. Your radar range and your boarding attack strength. Everything else, your pilot is just telling you what your pilot is and what the current orders are. It doesn't show you what the default behavior is, which we'll show at a later stage. Your second one is your crew. Gives you information about the whole crew you've got. It'll also tell you that it's got no crew on this. It's only the minor. So because it's only the minor, uh, sorry, the pilot, because it's only the pilot, it drops down the availability because it's got a crew capacity of four. That one is divided by the four potentials, so it don't just take them all out because you're just going to drop the rank down. Again, you can sort them out and you can also display for current roles. Loadouts, which tells you what it's carrying, it's weaponry and also it's computer, so you know you've got Duck Computer Mark 1 and various stuff like that. You can also set your primary weapon groups if you so wish. We'll talk about more like that when we come down to doing things with... Um, our ships and stuff, you know, our attack ships, anything that we're going to do combat with, we'll talk about them. The AI kind of does its own thing anyway, so don't worry too much about that, unless you want to control one yourself. Next one is a new one, the logbook. It actually tells you the logbook for each specific ship. So you can see this ship has done trade completed. It's found the logbox, trade completed, all the trade completed. It's also had a police interdiction there. It's set to comply, which we'll talk about global settings at a later stage. It's all default, always default as to comply. You can see here, response, ignore. You can change that as well, so you'll pick up lock boxes and stuff like that. That's really good if you're trying to find something that it's done in the past. Your behavior, which we've already talked about, which is on sector auto mine, it'll tell you your skill because you need to know your skill for certain things. Like, for example, sector auto mine is no skill, so you can go ahead and do that. But if we wanted to change it to do, uh, where are we? Advanced auto mine. We need three star average, and expert auto mine is a four star average. While your miner's doing stuff, he is getting rank. It takes a long time to get set up, but once you got it there, then you can start doing some of the juicy stuff. And obviously, we've got the default behavior actually set up here: tracked combat, mining, navigation, trade, and advanced. That advance is a new one, and that is going to be brilliant when we come to doing trading, which I'm hopefully going to be able to do on the next episode. When we come to doing our own trade stations, repeat orders are going to come into play. Our last one is individual instructions. Individual instructions overwrites global instructions. At the moment, it's using the global settings. Everything's global settings. Found lock boxes. We can change this. So if we say collect, Tells you what the global is, which is on ignore, and it's going to collect it. I don't want him to tell me he's collected the lock box, so I'm going to tell him to not notify me. I could set it to tell him to notify me, so every time he finds a lock box, he's going to go, We found something out here. I'm going to tell him not to bother. Just collect it, and I'll deal with it later. We can go to that thing where it says, Show my chips with inventory on, and then we can deposit it to our HQ when we get our HQ. Found contraband, we want it to destroy, drop crates. Everything else, found abandoned ship, it's only got a pilot, so we don't want him to lose crew, so we won't do anything like that. Automatic resupply is currently off, and obviously the blacklist, so we can stop them going to certain sectors and stuff. He's only in one sector, we don't need to worry about that. And then the fire authorization overrides, which again, we don't need to worry about, he's a minor. The last one is plots, which I don't want to go into too much detail, as I said, because obviously that's the one that we're going to be talking about when we do the stations. It's got no sub menus or anything like that, so we don't need to worry about it too much. Now we want to talk about the ones up here. First one is your options. That's what it says on the tin. Bear in mind, there are two different types of your options menu. As you can hear, you can still hear the gameplay in the background. That menu does not pause the game. 
You can see things are being attacked. If I just go into my map for a second, if I press my escape key, then there we go. Now the game is paused. That means nothing is happening in the background. Be wary of that if you do hit your options menu. If I go to my map, it will release the game. If I go back to my options menu, the game is still released. Bear that in mind. Next one, player information. This is all your information. There's loads of menus on this again. This is where you personalize things. Your name. You can change your name. Let's change mine to Rugged Gamer. My organization, always Rugged Industries. You can change your logo. So last time we had the bird with the guitar on our previous play on 3.3. I'm going to change it now to something a little bit different. Uh, what should we go with? Kind of like that. And there's a nice little tiger there. I, I don't want that. What is that? I no idea what it is. It looks like a cat. Or a wolf or something. It looks cool. So we're going to do it. As you can see, that's your ship there. It's showing you that we've got a new logo on it. Default skin ship. A ship skin, even. This will change your color of your ships. These are all defaults, so it's not paint mods or anything like that. Uh, I don't think we've got the digital paint. No, we definitely need to look for digital paint. I like that one. I'm going to go ahead and go for the green, green tinted ones, because they look pretty cool. This also tells you what your wealth is as well. Net worth is 329,000 credits. Considering we started off with 10,000, we're already doing really well. What this does is it takes into account the value of your ships. Bear in mind the value of your ships drop because obviously you purchased them, you're not going to get your money back. This is what you would get if you sold your ships. It's not what you spent for it, but it's still a good investment. Obviously total value stations, we don't have any. We've got nothing in our inventory and we've got 37,000 credits available cash and we've got no station accounts. So now we've got three people on our books. Average skill of one and a quarter stars. And our total personnel skill is a rank of 27. Adventure is currently disabled at the moment, so we'll not discuss that. And the government, we've got zero police authority because we don't have any sectors. And I'm not going to set words for a police authority. This is where you set things that are illegal in your sector. So, for example, if you want to... Um, make energy cells a contraband you can go ahead and do that so every ship that's carrying energy cells your police ships are going to blow them up probably not the best idea to do for energy cells next one is factions and relations this is a new screen for 4.0 and it's brilliant at a glance i can see everything whereas before i had to keep scrolling up and down to see things this gives you a glance a very quick quick overlook for this anything that's on minus 15 you can usually get away with getting it back up very easy. Anything lower than that, you really are going to struggle. So try and keep your minus 15s as friendly as you can. Obviously, everything else is set to zero. Uh, we don't have any interaction with... Nope, with a split at the moment. All split at minus five. They'll allow you to dock. So minus five, definitely keep it at minus five and above. Because you can actually set them up. Uh, and get the resources, which we'll talk about later. The other thing they've introduced is declare war. You can actually declare war on one of these factions. If I got the Ministry of Finance, I don't want you on to kill you. Declare war, everything gets blown up. By them. Because we've got two miners. Really good. Do not overlook that. Keep it going. Keep your factions going. And you'll slowly work it up a little bit better, which is great. Next one is statistics. All the statistics you want. Are in here so those of you who are really wanting to concentrate on your statistics you got this you know you want to show off how much time you played boom there you go time played total time six and a half minutes uh, six and a half hours sorry time spent in a ship 36 minutes that's how many i've controlled time spent boosting one minute and three seconds boosting all this information here it's awesome you know it tells you what your top rank is how many saved games you've had if you want to show off your stats that's how you do it. Our inventory, which we've discussed about before with crystals, exactly how it is from the previous section. Modifications. We don't have any modifications. Right now, you can't get any modifications. We'll discuss that at a later stage. Spacesuit upgrades. Again, we don't have any spacesuit upgrades. We could get spacesuit upgrades right now, but we don't want to waste our credits on it. But this is where it would be if you had a spacesuit space upgrade. Uh, but we'll discuss that when we come to doing it. 
global orders this again i will discuss in greater depth when we come to doing things on uh sorry dot create yeah that's fine so everything's set it's set pretty well so i won't mess around with it too much just leave it as is account management this is where you'd have all of your um station set to I believe this might have slightly changed since uh, 4.0. I didn't really use it too much. I used to do it individually, but now you can accept all estimates. When we come to building stations, this I will show off a little bit more. Personnel management. This is a godsend. When they placed this in at 3.3, this really resolved a lot of problems. From this page here, you can move all of your people around. You can literally right click, work somewhere else for me, and tell them to work somewhere. Since we've only got three captains, we can't because obviously you need a captain for your ship. But it's so good. And it also tells you the skills as well. You can define the skills. So if I wanted a manager, it'll tell me what the current skill they have for that role, not their current role, which is so good, so useful. Obviously, you've got a current role there as well. Do not overlook using this. You're going to use it loads when you come to moving stuff around and maintaining that high level uh, for the ships that we want to do so, stuff like uh, expert auto mining and stuff like that. We'll come to that more later on. Next one is messages. All your messages come into here now. So they, they take them out of where it used to be. So it's all in here. So when you've got any promotional ceremonies and stuff like that, they will post them all here and you can mark them as red. You've also got low priority and high priority. Unique opportunity. It'll tell you so stuff like um, if you got, so you saw the Hattic Far mission we had and the it's got some law behind it. This is where you'll get the lore. As you can see here, if you're reading this automated message, you've been identified as being capable of aiding us in becoming a fully fledged independent nation. If we go back to our missions, you'll see that you've got a mission set for that. Really good little touch they've put into that. And obviously our promotional ceremony, because we're, we're, because we're doing mining for the Antigon and for the Argon, we're gaining our rep, so we then get promotions. Next one is our transaction log. This is your personal transaction, so it'll tell you everything. So I transferred credits over to um, the Argon Wharf because I bought a ship. It actually tells you your monetary value. It tells you how much you've earned and how much you've lost. You see here, we set it to show more. It'll bring it further back so we can see. And actually, over the whole time, I think that's it. We've got a total of 48k credits, which is exactly what we've got there as well. It gives you 10k for the starting balance. It's so much fun to see stuff like this. You can see your growth and decline and back into growth. Really good touch. The last one is the logbook. That shows you everything now. So this is not just for one ship. This is all of your logs. You can then narrow it down to general logs, your mission logs, news. So when they're mounted defenses, when they're under attack, stuff like that, alerts, any alerts that you get, your upkeep, which isn't too much of a problem right now because all he's doing is telling us that we're getting credits. When you get stations, it'll show you a little bit more as well. And tips. Any tips that you've got during the game? Remember the first one? Press H to open the help menu and select a tutorial to learn about X4 Foundations. Side note, also check out the Rugged Gamer for more videos. I don't think they're going to put that in somehow. Any tips you've got will be in there, so don't worry about losing them. They are still there for you to check out. You can also clear your logbook if you so wish. Clear your logbook. Next one is your dock interaction that we've discussed many times. This will change as you go to different stations, different ships and stuff like that, but it generally is basically the same thing. Transfer words. Buy ships. Get up. Trade. Go to ship. Ship information and upgrade repair dock ships. Simple as that. Transfer of words is what's in your inventory. Inventory, not what's in your ship. Trade is what's in your ship. Since I don't have a ship, telling me what ship I had previously selected, what it can do. Remember, if I go to the menu, I've actually got, uh, sorry, onto the map, I've actually got the ship selected somewhere. Oh, actually, it's picking it up because it's closest in range. There you go, fair enough. So, it's pretty simple as that. Obviously, that slightly changes when you're in ships. You know, there'll be like docking requests and stuff like that. Pretty simple, pretty explanatory. Self explanatory. The last one is obviously your map and an encyclopedia. Sorry, these are the last ones here. Encyclopedia, which tells you more lore, more background, more information. If that's what you like, check it out. Known production modules. 
And when you've picked up a production module, it will put it all in here for you. It'll also give you highest trade offer amounts. Loads of trades there. You can narrow it down as well if you so wish. They're buying ore, energy cells, silicon, and food rations. They're selling energy cells, refined metals, silicon weapons, and medical supplies. You'll see the big one here, the big red line, is ore. They're buying a lot of ore. It'd be a shame for somebody to put a miner in there and take an opportunity. You can also see energy cells constantly going up and down. We're going to capitalize on that as well. Your description as well. So you can see a little bit of a description about Argon, the Argon um, planets. And obviously, the Argon Prime system has served as the capital of the Federation. So you, know, you can see stuff like that. It's really good. Black Hole Sun. Learn about Black Hole Sun. And Second Contact. Again, all the same information you've got from previous. You can see there, they've been selling water and that's dropped off. They've been buying food rations. We're, buying, we're selling ore. It isn't on there because there isn't really much requirement for ore. These are the top four. They always show the top four. And you can obviously mark all as red as well. But you can see there, 190 entries for factions. A lot of information. It tells you about each of the ranks. You get your timeline, which as is, tells you the timeline since we have no information on our timeline change it human era new time but we don't have any information at the present moment and ship comparisons you can compare ships you can compare every ship uh we got a loadout no you have to set up your own loadout which is a shame but you can compare you select one ship, confirm it, select your second ship, confirm it, it'll give you a readout of your ships. Tutorials and help, if you don't need them, you got me. But no, seriously, if you need help or anything like that, if you can't get it from YouTube or anything like that, there is still the in-game help. Rely on that, it does have the information you require, so sometimes it's better to see than read. Hopefully that's helped you out on understanding, I know it's really basic down on the right absolute basic of the uh, menus but the, there's just so much for a new player so bear that in mind if you are a returning player as a new player you remember you've got all these menus what the hell do they all do so hopefully me going through each and every one of them even ones you may already know what they do I'm, I'm trying to make sure i don't miss any that you may not know so please if you aren't quite as new or you, if you did know some of them bear with it and hopefully you have picked up on what you needed that's going to be me for this episode. This episode has got so much information fed at you. Hopefully it has helped you. If you're missing, if I've missed anything or if you're missing some information that you really need, please let me know in the comment section and I will get back to you and I will help you get through whatever it is you need and to get you on to enjoying the game. This game is phenomenal uh, when you get into it. It's got so much you can do. So hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully you'll join me and join me on the Discord and playing with other people who are in the X4 community, sharing what you've done. There's so much they've brought in now that it's more tailored around sharing. It, it's going to go into multiplayer at some stage, which is going to be phenomenal. So let us know what you think. Join us on the Discord, as I say. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to join me for more of these videos. But until next time, everybody, take care for now. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now.